by looking to online uh, discussion and buzz relating to the issue of Burkina Faso and that situation there. That's right. Uh, so a couple of images that have been uh, put up on social media uh, by uh, Burkina Bay, uh, pro I suppose people who have an interest in the political situation. I hope, uh, I want a world where each being can enjoy complete freedom. That is one message that was put up on uh, Twitter uh, in French and translated there by one Twitter user. Another is saying to uh, the current lieutenant colonel, who is uh, the transitional president, Yakuba Isaac Zida, or the self-declared uh, president, uh, get out of power, dégagé, which is a very direct way in French of saying, move off. Uh, the military in Burkina Faso clamping down on mass demonstrations is the message above that particular image. This one is even more direct, uh, um, I think. Uh, you do not replace one a devil with a little devil. On a remplace le diable par un diableton. So le diableton, or a little devil, doesn't, shouldn't be replacing a, I suppose, a big devil. And uh, that is a reference to Yakuba Isaac Zida uh, replacing um, Compoiré. Uh, so uh, another image that has gone up online is this, which went up online a couple of days ago. It, has, it is still being shared. Uh, Thomas Sankara was uh, the president of Burkina Faso from 83 to 87. He was actually a long-time ally, ally of uh, Blaise Compoiré, uh, but before being killed in, in a power struggle. While revolutionaries as individuals can be murdered, you cannot kill ideas. That is uh, a message being put up uh, online by a Kenyan photojournalist, uh, somewhat dated now, unfortunately, because uh, things remain somewhat complicated in uh, Burkina Faso uh, at the moment, Tom. Um, let's move on to another story you've picked out for us. The French media have been looking at uh, various opposition personalities here in France, including a, a, a female politician who nearly declared herself uh, to be the new president earlier on this weekend. That's right. Now, I, I, should, I should have made uh, clear that this is a, a, a conversation about uh, events in Burkina Faso, but this particular lady, Saran Seremé, uh, almost declared herself uh, President Tom on national television on Sunday, uh, this on the RTB uh, national television network in uh, in Burkina Faso. She actually went to the studios. She was about to make a declaration that she was the transitional president before uh, Mr. Isaac Zida got in ahead of her. So a lot of people curious about this lady, uh, who she is, what her background is. In fact, she was formerly in the same political party as Blaise Compaoré before um, differences forced her to leave the party in 2012. And she led a demonstration of women, actually, against power in the last number of days. So she is somebody who is a figure that is quite intriguing at the moment. A lot of people wondering if she could become a figurehead of the opposition movement. One further message or uh, article on opposition figures or civil society figures, uh, Guy Hervé Cam. Now, this he is, he is speaking to uh, Le Pays, which is a, an online paper in Burkina Faso. He's the head of a movement called the Citizen Sweep Out, or Le Ballet Citoyen. Now, they were involved in a lot of demonstrations last week. And he's saying, look, we did call on the army to take responsibility for the situation in place to avoid a bloodbath. But just to clarify the situation, we never called on them to take power. A lot of people saying that some of their members were present uh, during a press conference where Isaac Zida declared that he was the transitional president. Uh, this, of course, the, the lieutenant colonel, colonel of the Burkina Bay Army. So uh, this particular civil society group who were very president, present during the protests, distancing themselves from this transitional power. Uh, so I suppose you, some are calling it a coup d'etat. Okay, and uh, people in the region uh, wondering if the same thing could perhaps happen in their uh, countries, and that's particularly... Uh, come out in a blog that you've picked out from, from Congo. That's right. Uh, so this headline uh, on this blog, Congo Siasa, uh, a blog spot uh, blog. Uh, the headline there, it's quite small, but it reads, Could Lwili reach Kinshasa? Lessons from the streets of Burkina Faso. Now, hashtag Lwili is uh, gathering an awful lot of tweets in the Mure language, which is, which is one of the languages of Burkina Faso. And it is a hashtag which means uh, bird, so it's actually a, a ref it's a hashtag used for any events going on in Burkina Faso to gather that information together. So some wondering, could it happen in Kinshasa, uh, where uh, you know could it also be the case that the constitution may, in two years' time, when elections come up in Congo Kinshasa, uh, would politicians try the same thing and could it see the same consequences? This article says that we saw in Tunisia and Egypt in 2011 uh, similar events uh, to a certain extent in Chile in 1988 and the Philippines in 1986. What are the chances that seen? witnessed in Ouagadougou will be replayed in Kinshasa and could the fact that the constitution was almost well was attempted there was an attempted am, 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 amendment of the constitution in Burkina Faso which saw the protests uh, that took place in the past week could that um, I suppose affect 
politicians regionally uh, in their decision-making process uh, could, have, I suppose, dissuade them from trying to amend the constitution. So that's one question being asked on that blog from Congo. And indeed, the French edition of the Huffington Post has looked at various different politicians in Africa or, or leaders who have modified the constitution. And it's quite a long list, Tom. Stay on mm. in power. Yeah, there are plenty out there who've been in power for, uh, for several decades already. Well, thank you very much indeed Thanks, for that. Thanks, Tom. Uh, James Creed, and that was today's edition of Media Watch. It's time now for Focus here on France 24. Today we're going to turn our eye to the United States, where a Republican takeover of the U.S. Senate is looking increasingly likely in this week's midterm elections. Well, if that happens, President Barack Obama and his Democratic Party will face more opposition than before. But even so, the health care overhaul that carries Obama's name looks